a regular board meeting with Zoom streaming um, to order. Uh, if Cindy, if you would please, it's actually 703, 703. Um, Cindy, can you take a roll call, please? Helen Derblay? Here. Becky King Adams? Here. Brian Olson? Here. Linda Ryan? Here. Heidi Wazinski? Here. Okay, everyone can stand with your presentations. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first report on our agenda is to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of April 21st, 2021. So do I have a motion? Motion, motion to carry. Second. Yes, I second. Becky, second. Any discussion? Okay, um, you know, go around so we can take roll to approve the board minutes for the April 21st, 2021 minutes. Um, So 
certificate from Cook County to you. <laughs> I, Joseph McCoola. I, Joseph McCoola. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Library Trustee. The duties of the Office of Library Trustee. Of the Niles Main District Library. Of the Niles Main District Library. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability.
Nominations are now in order for the Office of Vice President. Are there any nominations? I nominate Trustee Olivia Hanushik for Vice President. Second. I second the nomination. Are there any other nominations? Or do you accept first? Yes, okay. Are there any other nominations? Okay, then we'll take a roll call, please. Trustee Gerlick? Yes. Trustee Anusia? Yes. Trustee Kane Adams? Yes. Trustee Maluka? Makula. Makula, I'm so sorry. Yes. Trustee Olson? Uh, no. Trustee Rosansky? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Okay, nominations are now in order for the Office of Secretary. Uh, yes, you want to? Yes. Yeah, because it's different than that. I know. I, I'm looking I'm not, at the official paper. Okay. Cool. The official. I nominate Susan. Are there any seconds? I second the nomination. Susan, do you I accept it? Yes. Are there any other nominations? Yes. I name nominate uh, Diane Olson. Is there a second? I second. So, nominations declined. There'll be no further nominations, so we'll take a vote of a roll call. Vice President Trustee Mnuchin, Treasurer Trustee Makula, and Secretary Trustee Schoenfeld. As newly elected trustees to the Niles Main District Library Board, I am looking forward to our collective efforts 
with residents and staff to provide a sustainable a sustainable and invitational library of the future for all of our our library community. Thank you. Okay, the next item on our agenda is trustee reports. Public comment. Public. Oh, my mistake. Okay, go right ahead. Do we have public comments? And who's handling that? Uh, Cindy has the list of okay. people that are here in person, and then I have the ones that were assigned to the panel. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so, uh, Mr. Jerry, is this the Yes. Hi, I'm Jerry Sapansky, 45-year resident of Niles. I've been... Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate all the new board members. It's a pleasant change. I've been watching all the library meetings online or in person or on the phone, and this is a welcome change. The old board members seem to be big spenders. Go to your tax bills over the past six years and see what's happened. I don't think it's a library anymore. I think everyone is hiding in bushes trying to make it a community center. If it's a library, I know I can run it for half the expense as a community center. This is where all our programs will have been unaccounted for. Uh, no data on as far as attendance, who is in attendance, etc. Uh, say look at your tax bills and I have just some other comments library board trustees should not have to use FOIA requests for information from the director or the finance director if you look at the later part of the meeting you see they have to go through FOIA to get information they're the trustees we don't want anything hidden here the library director and finance director are accountable for the information to the board. The library director should provide information on all programs, the frequency of them, the attendance, where the attendees are from, and employee cost estimates as to that cost. No information to my mind in the past six years have been given on all these programs. If you have 20 programs and three people attend each program, that's not a program. That's what we're spending the money on. Again, look at your tax, at your taxes. There shouldn't be any food in the library except for the employees. All people in the library should provide their library card. Sometimes this library has been used, and I personally checked it out in 2018, as a babysitting service. The parents drop the kids off, they sit in the lobby, the parents go out to dinner and then pick them up. Again, this is not a community center, it's a library. Why all the computers in the library? How many times are all those computers used at once? Again, get the cost estimates, look at them, and then decide. We haven't had any information on these things. Report on my pet peeve was that 3D printer that was pushed through. I'd like a separate report, and I think the board members should see how many different people have actually used that 3D printer from its inception? I think, I'm just guessing. I have no idea as to the electrical output for that thing or how many the same people have used that machine. I could be wrong. Prove me wrong. Show us the facts. Show the board the facts. We can't spend money on that kind of stuff. Okay, and the other thing is, I really like Ms. Lemke, the way the, the library runs, you come in to check the book, the systems are fine. Don't turn this place financially into a community center. It's a library. And I thank you all for your time.
the next speaker is Elizabeth Wyandich. Elizabeth Lynch. Um, I'm a homeowner in the community. In Niles, I have two children. I'm here specifically to address our, address our new trustees, Ms. Hanusia, Ms. Schoenfeld, and Mr. McCullough. At the last meeting, one of your supporters called in to say that she truly believes in her heart that you have not come on the board just to say no. That you will look with open minds at the needs of the library and the community. I hope very much that she is right. I hope that you will listen to the expertise of staff and the voices of the community members, like me, that love and need the library. You ran on greater transparency and community involvement, and I ask that you live up to those principles. I would love the chance to meet with each of you to talk about why the library is so important to my family, why this library was part of our decision to buy a home here and to raise our family here. But I have just one voice. Before you make any cuts or changes to the staff, the collections, and programs, I urge you to do a thorough assessment. You could conduct a community needs assessment, you could create a task force. You could hold workshops or community conversations promoted to library users and non-users that allow us to share our priorities and our hopes for the new era that you have promised us at the library. At the very least, you need to hear from the people in the community that have come to rely on these services. Before you make cuts or shift priorities, you should hear from the thousands, thousands of library users that are your neighbors, the parents whose children learn to read here, the seniors that found a way to stay engaged and active, teens that are keeping out of trouble, job seekers who learned a new skill, people who met and learned from a neighbor outside their political bubble. The last year has been tough for all of us, but our struggles are not just financial. We have been isolated, fearful, and politically divided. To be frank, this campaign divided us further. To me and to many residents, the opportunities that the library creates to meet each other and connect over something positive are not frivolous expenditures, but an essential part of rebuilding our community. I don't know you as well as the supporter who called in last month. But I hope her faith in you was not misplaced. Please, be thorough, be open, be willing to hear how much the library means to so many of your neighbors. Thank you. Ashcroft, I want to congratulate the newly elected library trustees. Thank you. Steve Dowdy. I'm here because I wanted to uh, comment on uh, a comment that uh, was read to the board last August, and I was not able to tell him either. The subject of my comment was roof replacement, and it was my opinion that the board was wasting taxpayers' money to bring to hire a consultant to write specification and hire a project manager to manage the job. I stated that Greg Pritz was a smooth talker and he gave and I gave him and the board three easy steps to replace the roof. I also stated that Greg lacked the skill set 
to manage this project and again was wasting taxpayers' money. Then I stated that I was that I have spent 45 years, I have 45 years of experience as a facility manager with the degrees and certifications to confirm I know what I'm talking about. I maintain over millions of square feet of roofing. I sent my uh, uh, my public comments to Susan Lemke and uh, to read to the board. To my surprise, uh, she apparently forwarded them to the uh, board president, Tim. Uh, at the meeting, Susan read my comments in a degrading manner and then stated that I was rude. Note, according to policy, the board does not respond to public comments. But that night, Tim had prepared a written response. And remember, I was not there. So, Tim said a lot of nice things about Greg, and then compared Greg's background as an accountant and with my 45 years as a facility manager, and then said he would follow Greg's, Greg's recommendation. So the board followed Greg's recommendation and wasted a lot of taxpayers' money. I'm here to say that I don't feel that I was rude. I think part of it was because of the way my comments were read. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, when Susan read my comments, they were read with intent. I'm also happy to see we have new board members. The voters have spoken and made changes, and rightfully so. Another request I have is never allow Susan Lemke or any acting executive directly to host an election forum. Long story behind that, but I won't keep going. Finally, uh, as you remember, Susan, you had to send me some emails that uh, that I requested, and just to say, you know, I was not real happy with what some of the things that you said. So. Uh, I don't think you want me to bring them in, they're out in the car, but let's uh, we'll put that behind us. So, going forward, thank you for listening up, and enjoy the next few years. Staff. Uh, my name is Stephen Yassel, 8141 Odell, Niles. Uh, I just wanted to congratulate the new elected trustees on the board tonight and um, wanted to make a few comments as well. I know last month uh, there were some comments by uh, Trustee Keen Adams uh, in regards to Trustee Durblitz's um, letter to the editor in the Niles Journal. And, um, Trustee Keen Adams concluded that uh, what Carolyn was saying was untruthful. And two of the points that Carolyn had made, one was that the videos of the meetings, some of them are edited. Could be a simple cut, could be a title faded at the beginning of the end. Thing is, they are all edited. And some of them do have cuts of missing time from the meetings. I don't know how long they are, but they're there. I'm a videographer, I know how to spot some of those things. So if you take the time to go through, I don't know, the five, six years of board meetings, you'll find some that do have information missing. Um, the second point uh, is also addressing what Carolyn wrote, that uh, Trustee Keene Adams uh, said was untruthful, was um, the board meeting packets with the agendas and um, information from other consultants and whatnot uh, there's PDFs up there, uh, they take you out of the page, you have to go back in. So it could be a little more streamlined. I think there should be a little more of the uh, materials that are talked about amongst this board, ready for the residents, for all of us to see and uh, come to our own conclusions. And um, 
one other thing about um, this past election, there were a lot of dirt that was thrown around verbally online. Um, a lot of things weren't true. And nobody went and corrected them. And some of the people are in this room, but I'm not going to point anybody out. But it comes down to we all need to treat each other with a little more respect. We all come in here. We're obviously all here for the library. That's a good start. We're all in one place. We're all doing something for common cause. But if we're going to continue to butt heads, I mean, this is not going to be fun. So I look forward to seeing a lot of productivity on this board going forward. I especially look forward to the next two years to see how this board uh, matures. And um, I look forward to the rest of tonight. So thank you. Uh, I'd first like to say congratulations to our newest board members. You worked hard to get here, and your job will not be easy. The election was hard fought, but ultimately, the voters elected you to be stewards of this beautiful library, but also financial stewards for the people who ultimately pay for most everything you see here. I have the utmost confidence that you will be open-minded and fair. I also expect that you will be inquisitive to learn everything you can about how this library functions. We love this library. There may be opportunity for change. Change is a two-edged sword. It can be both exciting and frightening all at the same time. At some point, all of you on this board will either have to change, make change, accept change, or find that there is no change needed. The most important thing to remember is that every one of you love this library or you would not be here. You may have different ways of going about it, but ultimately your decisions will be made not by emotion, but by observation, interviews, review of data. In conclusion, I'd like to quote Rear Admiral Grace Hopper. The most dangerous phrase in the English language, perfect place for a library, we've always done it this way. Congratulations all and thank you. Courage is nothing. Courage is acting and going forward while you're scared. There is no one that's been courageous that wasn't scared at the same time. We have three people, Joe McCoola, Olivia Anushik, and Susan Schoenfeld, who have stepped up with courage in an atmosphere that is not all that inviting. Because there's a fictional story that we have got to overcome. The fictional story is if you cut a budget, if you cut an expenditure, the library will die. People will suffer. Lunches won't be had. I have a real story for you. What if we can have all that at a less cost? There is no reason why we can't have everything here fully funded, and still abate back to the taxpayers a minimum of eight to $10 million over the next four years, as we did at Maine Township. We haven't lost one program. We have $11 million in the bank. And we operate all of Maine Township at a budget that I believe is about $450,000 less annually than this library. 
So when someone says to you that I am a Chevy salesman and I sell great cars, and this car you can get, and I'm going to put it in your driveway, and you say, thank you, David, very much, and it's worth $35,000, then you get the bill for $72,000, I'm not doing you any favors. Courage. Now, when you vote for someone, you're not voting for that person. You're not voting for their tie or shirt. You're not voting for the way they comb their hair. Each person stands for policies. You're voting for their policies. These voters that voted were knowledgeable. They took the time. And they saw what are your policies going to be. This board was not answering the call as far as the policies that were sought. Not only that, were they not answering they were actually answering with a dial tone. Well, now the phone's been connected again. And that's because of you three and the courage of Carolyn Durbo as well. Now, that old, saying, that, that old song, fun, 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 until the voters take the checkbook away, when the board writes checks, it's the boards that writes checks, it's the taxpayers that fund it. We just lost a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives. <coughs> because our population crunch, because people are leaving. They can't afford Illinois because they can't afford to waste money. We're making it that way for our residents. This, this one of 6,960 6, local governmental bodies can make a difference. We showed the example in Maine Township and it wasn't greeted with arms open. No one's throwing roses at you as you walk down the street but you do the right thing. Now, one of the things that bothered me was what happened years ago with Friends of the Library. It's my opinion, strictly my opinion, for whatever it's worth, that money was stolen by the board. They just took it. I wanted to see that reversed, and it wasn't reversed. And ever since then, it drew my attention, and this budget is on its way to $10 million annually if it wasn't for you three stepping in along with Carolyn, if you look at the projections. So what do we want to be? We want to be responsible, we want to be courteous, we want to be mature. In other words, we need to be fiduciaries with the money that's not yours. It's the taxpayer's funds. And I thank you so much for listening. With one last note, there, when watching the tape, there was a resignation and an appointment action that was taken by this board, by the previous board, on their way out the door. The cars were running, lights were shutting off, and they made this resignation and appointment right at the last bell, knowing that the new board was coming. Now, first of all, we didn't do that in Maine Township. There were a number of things we said, wait a minute, things we wanted to address, but we said, no, let's leave it up to the new board. That's what the, tax, that's what the voters said. This, that board didn't listen to the voters. Dial tone again. But what else did they do? They did not post the resignation and appointment on the agenda. They did not post it on the website, as far as I saw. And the Open Meetings Act requires a posting. If that posting isn't done, I suggest, and I don't know everything, I suggest that that action is reversible and it should be reversed so that the voters who brought in this board can consider it. Now, maybe the board will go along with what happened when they consider it. But it should be at the hands of this board. So I'm asking that, uh, and suggesting through your legal counsel that you look into this to see whether or not what was done was proper. Because I suggest that it may not have been. And if it was not, it should be reversed and then done properly. Thank you. So that is all of our uh, comments from people who are in attendance. I'm going to come to the mic just so everybody can hear. They have a great many comments that were submitted in advance. So here we go. Question, uh, comment number one from a Jeanette Lee. Library Board, I would like to welcome the new members to the Library Board. As there was a lot of talk about cutting programs throughout the campaign, I would like to voice my support of the wide range of programming the Library offers. 
As an adult in my 40s, I love the fact that there are cultural and art programs to attend, and not just programs for job searching and job skills for my age group. Please don't consider my age group as so one-dimensional that we were only interested in job skills. My kids have grown up with library programming, from multiple story time options and reading with Rover to Wonderground, and now are about to enter the age where they can attend drama club and Dungeons and Dragons meetups and other exciting programs in the teen underground. The recent collaboration between the library and Culver School has been extraordinary. The monthly Famished for Fiction program at Culver is very popular and has been getting students excited to talk about books with each other. Please don't look at this program as competition for the school's librarian. Look at it as the incredible collaboration that it is. I have found the librarians and staff to be extremely knowledgeable, and I hope that you rely on their expertise to determine the right choices for the library's collection of materials, as well as the library's selection of programming. The library's budget is not just a number. It reflects programming and people that the community enjoys and counts on, bringing people together and enriching their lives. Here's number two from Carter Esterling. Good evening. I live in Niles with my family, and it is my understanding that there exists the possibility of cuts to the library's budget and programs. We were dismayed to learn this. Since moving here in 2017, we have benefited from the library's breadth of offerings. As a partial list, we have checked out many hundreds of adult and children's books, attended in-person children's story times and other events, used our library membership to access Overdrive with Libby, Canopy and Flipster, and accessed online programming during the COVID pandemic. Before the pandemic, we often used the library as a place to meet friends and to spend time browsing on bad weather days, and we look forward to resuming this. We are also planning on using the passport services when again available, among other things. Particularly in a place such as Niles, where there are limited places for public gathering, I believe it would be short-sighted and unfortunate to diminish the library's funding. It is a public good with benefits that extend beyond its physical location. I would be willing to pay a greater share in taxes to ensure the continuance of a welcoming library with broad offerings such as we have now. Thank you. Uh, I should mention too that these are in the order they were received. I did not organize them in any way. This is from Tom Lynch. Mrs. Lemke, I know there are several new board members starting this month, and I wanted to write to let you and all the trustees know how much I value the excellent work that the library is doing. The library was one of the reasons my wife and I moved to Niles, and it is a central part of the life we've built here. I urge all of the board members to continue supporting the library building, staff, and programs. I am more than happy to pay my share of, to pay my share of taxes to help support the education the library provides and the sense of community it creates. Thank you. My name is Megan Roberts. I live in Niles with my husband and daughter. It is my understanding that there are budget cuts being considered. I wanted to share some of the ways we regularly use the library so you can consider these things as you consider the budget. When we moved to Niles in 20, 2017, we began to visit the library every weekend not just as a place for reading materials, but as a place to connect with the community and meet people. It was one of our favorite spots around town, and we met so many people who have become close friends. We continued to use the library weekly in this way until March of 2020. During quarantine, we placed weekly orders for books, magazines for all of us. This was one of the only things we looked forward to in 2020. The bag of reading materials was a savior. Now that the library is somewhat open again, we continue to go in weekly to check out usually 10 to 15 short chapter books for our daughter, who is a voracious reader, as well as magazines like Click, Spider, Highlights, and Animal Tales. For us, we consistently read from the hot picks as well as from the periodicals and a variety of nonfiction texts. I love the vibe of the library, filled with kind people and helpful staff. It's one of my favorite places around town. My daughter loves that she feels welcome and at home there. Thank you for your service to the Niles community. We look forward to continuing to use the library in all these ways and more. This one is from Jennifer, her last name C-I-O-K. I'm concerned about rumors of budget, staff, and programming cuts at the Niles Main District Library. 
As a former teacher in the area, I know how many of my students use this library for so many different purposes, from reliable technology to having a safe place to go after school. They were also able to find books that reflect their identities and books that allowed them to escape or to dream big about their future. Please keep the funding for the services and staff at the library. They are truly essential. Please make sure that you continue to add and renovate and reimagine what libraries can be used for, as Niall certainly deserves to have that space for all to use. This is from Elizabeth Seaskin. Yesterday, my son begged me to take him to the library during his lunch break from remote learning. I often struggle to find my son just the right books because his tastes have moved beyond most picture books, but he's not quite ready for chapter books either. The librarian we worked with asked about his favorite characters and helped us find some spooky and funny stories that he was excited to read on his own, all caps, which is a huge win. Then we went downstairs to the teen room and he fell in love. I don't know anything about video games, so I always have trouble helping him find ones that are at his skill and maturity level. Rachel got him talking and knew just the right way to draw out the information she needed before finding him the perfect stuff. Then they talked about TV shows and drawings, and she got him coming up with an idea for a movie. He's so excited about it, he wants to write a letter to a movie studio. We left with a huge stack of books and games and a writing project. But the help from your staff was even more valuable than the stuff. I'm so grateful to your staff for helping my son find things he loves and taking some of the pressure off of me to be an expert on his latest interests and hobbies. Your staff are invaluable to us. This one is from David Sutherland. Hello, growing up in Chicago, I have spent a lot of time in some very fine libraries. Upon moving to Niles, I was so pleasantly surprised when I first visited our library. The space, books, programs, events, equipment, curation, and friendly staff have all together made our library one of Niles' greatest treasures. Even during this pandemic crisis, the library didn't skip a beat and went above and beyond in looking after the community and, from what I understand, their own staff. We rely on the library for books for my child, who is a voracious reader, and the variety of ways I can access information to fit into my own busy schedule. The Niles Main Library is an institution I am truly proud to recommend, although thoughts of hoarding this resource have crossed my mind once or twice. <coughs> Wink emoji. I want to commend the library staff for tirelessly providing such a rich resource during some very challenging times. I strongly support the library as it is now, and I am counting on a future where we can find opportunities to make it even better. It's hard to put a price tag on such a crucial pillar of our community, but for what we pay in taxes, it's a bargain. Thank you for your service, and hope to see you all in person when this pandemic is finally under control. This is from a Teresa Groach. I'm sorry, can we please ask the audience to refrain from talking while the comments are being read? Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. So from Teresa Grote. Uh, Susan, Susan I, I, when Becky Keene Adams spoke, I didn't hear the name. What's the person that you're uh, uh, Her last name is G-R-O-A-T, first name Teresa. Thank you. Ms. Lemke, full disclosure, I'm not a Niles resident. I am also an employee of CPL's Thomas Hughes Children's Library. I have, however, three frequented your library and attended programs at your library with and without my sons for more than 20 years. I do not hesitate to refer Chicago patrons to your library if they wish to expand their search for materials as the Chicago Public Library has a reciprocating agreement with Niles. So it's with some alarm that I watched a video of a Niles Library forum where an individual made several statements that were clearly anti-inclusion and borderline racist. We celebrate diversity at CPL. Wow. We celebrate our patrons. When was that? We celebrate our patrons of various nationalities, faiths, and orientations. The statement that books reflecting different cultures are not welcome at Niles Library would indicate those cultures themselves are excluded as well. Yes, it's important to learn the language of the country where you now make your home, but just as important to retain your culture and pass it on to your children. And where better to do that than at our local library? And how better to do it than through books in your native language? I do so hope 
the opinion reflected in the video does not become the norm for any library. This is from someone named, uh, first name R-O-N-A-K, last name McFadden. I wanted to write the board to share my support of the library. The library is a place for all folks to connect. It's open to everyone and the foundation of our community. Our library needs to be available, accessible, and welcoming to all our community. My grandmother, who immigrated from India, felt welcome at our library. She saw people that looked like her. The access to education for everyone was her American dream come true. As times have changed, the needs and how we meet people where they are change. The library needs materials and programming that reflects the community. Please continue to keep our library welcoming for all. And it concludes with the quote, Whatever the cost of our libraries, the price is cheap compared to that of an ignorant nation by Walter Cronkite. This is from Linda Wacy, W-A-Y-C-I-E. When I was working, I started a grandparent support group at the Niles Library. The library graciously allowed me to use a room for a meeting and the room next door for a caregiver to care for the grandparents' grandchildren while we used the library for a meeting. After the meeting, the grandparents were encouraged to check out books to read to their grandchildren. What a wonderful outreach to this population. I have taught English in the Read to Learn program. While getting to know the students, I discovered that though they had a library card, they were not comfortable going to the library. They didn't know where to get the books they could easily read and too uncomfortable asking for help, though we know librarians are very helpful and friendly. I took them to the library, showed them where the easy English fiction and nonfiction readers were. I also learned that my Spanish-speaking students wanted to check out the same book in English and Spanish, which she did. What a great idea. I think it is easy to find out what foreign language books are being checked out and to continue to provide materials in those languages. I want to think that the Niles Library mission is to connect people and reading, movies, etc. material. Opening up people's minds to new ideas and enriching lives by learning should be the goal of the library. If you open the door with materials in the native language of your residents, you bring them into contact with so many other services they can access. Yes, there can be English language classes at the library, but the library can do both, teach English and have material in native languages. My hope for all libraries is to make their spaces welcoming to all and learn the barriers to people coming to the library and overcoming those barriers. All right, and now I have to apologize because uh, my staff has written a lot of comments, and so I'm embarrassed to read them, but they are comments, so I'm going to. My name is Rachel Coleus. I am one of the teen librarians here, and I'm reaching out as both a staff member and a community stakeholder. I know that many of our board members are new today, so I'd like to first say welcome. I'm writing to express my appreciation for our director, Susan Lemke, because I think it's hard to know what a staff culture is like from the outside, so I hope my letter sheds some light on how highly valued she is here. I've only been at the Niles Main District Library for three years, but it was obvious to me that the culture among staff here is warm and welcoming almost immediately after I started. I credit quite a lot of that positivity to Susan's leadership. Attitude tends to trickle down from the top, and Susan is someone who always leads by example. Her door is wide open to any staff member who wants to talk. She takes the time to carefully consider our thoughts and feelings before making big decisions. She's transparent and upfront with the staff. Her attitude is always positive, and she does not hesitate to celebrate us as individuals and departments when she notices us doing an excellent job. And she always notices when we do a great job because she is personally invested in every facet of the library. These examples don't even begin to, under, to cover Susan's deep understanding of libraries and their value in the community. The professionalism she brings to her work cannot be overstated. She is someone who knows what a library can and should do for patrons, and she has an in-depth knowledge of every library process. She is both an incredible leader and passionate library advocate. I could go on and on about the incredible work Susan does as a director day to day, but I think it's important to underline my immense gratitude for her leadership, specifically this past year. I don't want to beat around the bush on this. By keeping us employed and working throughout the pandemic, Susan single-handedly protected my physical and mental health. If I had been laid off or furloughed, I would have been displaced from the apartment I rent. I would have lost my medical insurance, and I'm not really sure where I would be right now. 
Susan spent countless hours supporting us while we kept the library running, serving our community in every way possible, both virtually and physically, and she kept this invaluable institution running safely above all of us. It was not a small feat, but Susan protected both the library and community through one of the hardest years we've ever faced. It feels impossible to include all of Susan's professional accomplishments in one short letter. Not that short, sorry. <laughs> But her success shines through the success of everyone who works at the Niles Main District Library. The library wouldn't be the same without Susan, and her absence would be felt across all levels of our library. I shudder to think where we'd be after this past year without her, because I can't imagine us getting through it without her strong dedication to this beautiful library. I know these details about Susan will become clearer the longer you serve on this board. Thank you for your time. Susan, may I ask a question? Yes. Are these the same letters that were emailed to all the trustees? Yes, it's not all of them. They sent some of them in specifically as public comments. So some of these are different than what we've received out in the email? I, I don't know about that, but it's not all that you received. You received something like 24 by email. This is not all of them. These are just the ones that the staff requested to have read tonight. Okay, but these are the ones we have these. I mean, these are yes. the same ones we have. Right. Okay, thank you. Dear board members, welcome. Congratulations on your positions on the library board. I hope you find your work here at the Niles Main District Library as fulfilling as I do. I want to take a few moments to introduce myself and let you know what I do here at the library. My name is Aileen Hannon. I started working at the library in 2012. I am a resident of Niles and moved here in 1994 from Chicago. My library there was the Edgeworth branch of the Chicago Public Library. I worked at that branch for three years with my brother. It is there that I met Susan Dove Lundy. She was a children's librarian and let me help out with story time and decorate her display windows. This is where I learned how valuable the public library is. My parents never took me to the library since we only had one car, so I never really knew what I was missing. Watching parents come in with their children for programs and books made me realize that when I had children of my own someday, the library would be an integral part of their lives. I loved it there. My children grew up at this library starting with story time. From there, they joined summer reading club. We attended the second Sunday specials and they participated in the library talent show when they Irish step danced on the stage. During all this, I managed to sneak in some reading for myself. I knew when my kids got older, I was going to work at this library. Not only do I work here, but both of my children worked here also. They worked here all through college to pay for their tuition. My daughter is now a librarian at the Northbrook Library, and I would like to believe it stems from this library. I started in patron services as a clerk at the front desk. I love working with the public. From there, I moved to outreach services where I filled an important need to service our patrons that cannot get to the library. Many of these patrons are in nursing homes, senior centers, and at home. They are a vital part of our community, and the library is such an important source for them. I learned a lot working in this department from these patrons. They made me a better employee by teaching me empathy and patience. Their knowledge and stories make me realize how much I still need to learn. They must never be dismissed or forgotten. Last February, I moved from that department into adult services and now work with interlibrary loans in a back on service desk serving patrons. When COVID-19 shut the library down, I didn't know what to expect. Like everyone else, I was unsure of everything. Susan Dove Lemke assured all of us that we would get through this together as a team and she went above and beyond to provide opportunities to work from home while ensuring we were safe. She has weekly meetings and keeps us updated on what to expect to the best of her ability. The library board plays such an important role during times like this. I cannot express how thankful or grateful I am to have a library director whom I feel I can go to and be heard. Susan is the common thread throughout this entire letter. She makes me want to work hard for our patrons and welcome them back with confidence that we are safe. As we enter a new phase, I wish you good health and look forward to working with you. This one is from April Lee of Youth Services. Over the last 15 years, I have worked in seven different public libraries, and I have never had a director that I admired and respected as much as I do, Susan Dove Lemke. What is the point of this? It's public comment. They are, were submitted for public comment, so we need to read them. From the first week I started at, North, at Niles Main District Library, I noticed how 
Is that a comment? Is that Point a of story? order. President, can you please keep the audience from uh, disrupting? Mm -hmm. Like any other comments, uh, Susan, just for just to be clear, these are public comments, even though they were sent to us. They they sent them separately, labeled public comment. Yes. Okay, so they decided to do both. Do you they think did. Uh, there's something we could do That's to speed public. this up? I, I'm going as fast as I can. Staff, right. Public is not staff. Yeah, this is not staff. If they don't have to anyone can be public comment. No, there's staff members. That's not fair. Public. All right, well, let me just keep going here. They are public comments. Let me just keep going. Um, from the first week I started at Niles, I noticed how present Susan was. She wasn't up in her office all day, but instead she was interacting with the public and with library staff getting to know us. I truly feel that an effective director needs to be in touch with their employees and with the public, so I've always felt encouraged and valued by Susan's practice of staying present. During my time at Niles, Anytime I ever had a question, concern, or comment to share with Susan, I knew I could always poke my head in her door or send her an email, which is always answered promptly. Especially during the pandemic, during which we were all so distanced, Susan always answered my questions the same day and helped calm my concerns. Before, because of this, I have always felt so supported by her. I really think there is something to say for library directors who have worked their way into a position. Susan has a history of working in libraries in a multitude of roles, so she understands the perspectives of all staff, from us librarians to our patron services associates, because she's been in our shoes before. It's truly rare to get all of these qualities in a director. Susan is such a gem, and I have so much gratitude for all she's done for us and our library. My name is Kate Levinson, and I have served as a Youth Services Librarian at Niles Main District Library for more than 11 years. I want to congratulate and welcome the newest members of the North Niles Board of Trustees. I am writing to express my appreciation for our director, Susan Dublinke. I'm going to try to truncate this just a little bit because this is taking so long. Um, over time, I began... Could you tell us how many more you have? Ten, maybe. Maybe less. If they're not all staff. There are some others that came later. Could we defer these to the next meeting? That's not how public comment works. I'm sorry. I know it's hard to listen to. Over time, I began to understand that what makes Susan an effective leader is her deep and careful approach to decision making, paired with her 22 years of organizational knowledge at Niles Main District Library. This is a subtle skill set, a silent one. It is often overlooked and undervalued. But over the years, as I witnessed Susan climb the ladder at Niles, it is this patient, deliberative approach to developing policy and protocols that make Niles Main District Library an effective workplace and community resource. Now it's from Kate Levinson. This one is from Leslie Hartunian. I think I am one of the newest employees hired right before the pandemic. While I do not have years of examples of appreciation, I do appreciate all that has been done this past year. I feel staff safety was always important to Susan, along with making access to the collection available to the public. Susan also went out of her way to attend village meetings with the village to help get the staff vaccinated and treated as essential workers. Weekly communication was so very important during this crazy time and staff was kept up to date with the Wednesday Zoom meeting. Refunding the tax dollars back to the community was such a generous gesture, realizing the difficulties many community members were facing. I don't think this got enough recognition. Excuse me, Susan, I think I'm going to need to interject here. Um, this Board of Trustees had an opportunity to include additional public comments to the public, and um, during our review of that uh, recommendation from a resident, the current board, some of the current board members and the previous board decided if we allowed public comments at the end, before we voted, we would be here all night. Right. So the trustees chose to vote against that. So I have to say now that we've been going through public comments, it's 10 after 8, and we do need to move on to the meeting, we may have to postpone those until the next board meeting because we have an agenda of quite a bit of business. All right. Well, you are the president, and it does, so I will it does fall you. under the fact that our trustees refuse to allow the residents 
additional comments because they said it would take too long in the meeting. And unfortunately, this has proven that point. Okay, well, uh, I will defer to you. You are the board president. Uh, I just have two more that are not staff. One is staff, but it relates to an item on the agenda. To the Niles Main District Library Board of Trustees, I urge you to act today to approve the recommended negotiated renewal of the library's health care insurance plan with Blue Cross Blue Shield. I want to call your attention to the following statements pulled from that motion under new business. United Healthcare has submitted a bid which will save the library money by using a provider network which is narrower than that of Blue Cross Blue Shield. This would cause some significant disruption in the treatment of some of the library's employees. There were a few employees who had no doctors or service providers in the network. One employee's oncologist was not in the network, for example. The doctors who are missing from the network tend to be specialists who are treating patients on a long-term basis. We also looked at the drugs covered by the core network. We followed essentially the same process as we did with the doctors and service providers and received similar results. We recommend that the library renew its health insurance with Blue Cross Blue Shield, given the uncertainty around the pricing of UHS and the lack of a broad network of doctors and service providers in their offering. I would like you to carefully consider what message your action would send to the library staff were you to decide that saving a little money this year with UHS, only to spend more money next year and even more the year after, is better for the library than ensuring that staff can continue to see our doctors and take the medications we need to keep on living and working. Our staff is counting on you to make the right decision tonight in deciding to pass the motion to renew the library's health care insurance plan with Blue Cross Blue Shield. And then I have uh, Renee Sutherland, who is a resident. When I decided to move to Niles more than 20 years ago, the biggest draws for me were the proximity to Chicago and the quiet neighborhood. It wasn't until we were about to have our son and were deciding whether to add on to our house or move to a bigger house that we looked more critically at the schools and library, and those were an important part of why we decided to stay here. The Niles Main District Library is the place where, as a toddler, my son learned how to share at the train table and learned how to pay attention and be part of a group at story times. Years ago, when I was between jobs, it was a source of free programming when we couldn't afford to pay for classes or activities. When we were looking at preschool options, we were able to meet teachers from many schools all at once at the preschool fair there. During the pandemic, we were able to put books on hold and pick them up contact free, and my son's been able to participate in virtual programs. Like so many of our neighbors, we're looking forward to this year's summer reading program. Most of us don't have time to participate in or watch board meetings for all of the various boards in Niles, and when it comes to the library, we know that our library has wonderful staff and excellent leadership, and we count on that continuing. Thank you to the director, librarians, and other staff and Board of Trustees for supporting the mission of our library. That is from Renee Sutherland. And then the last one is very short and very sweet. It says, I love our library from heaven. This was also received as a public comment. Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience. For the next item on the agenda, we are at number nine trustee report. Um, President, um, I do have something brief I'd like to share. During the past couple of weeks, I had the opportunity to accompany each newly elected trustee for an, a tour of the Niles Main Library. I had the pleasure of meeting many dedicated library staff. We went behind the scenes and received a detailed explanation and view of our library functions. Oh, it was a very informative experience and an opportunity to meet our staff. For years, I have tried unsuccessfully to get a board tour of the library, so this opportunity was a welcome experience for me and it provided an in-depth knowledge of our functions. Okay, do any other trustees have a comment they would like to make? Okay. Trustee Hanushik. Um, I was able to go on the tour. I learned a lot. I met a lot of staff. I appreciate it. And I also was, I was registered for a conference where I learned a lot about my role as a Thank you. Trustee Schoenfeld. It was a wonderful opportunity to meet some of you and work, to actually see what each trustee and was able to do and be a part of. So I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Trustee McCullough. I took the tour twice and uh, there's still a 
Black Worm at the library. So appreciate all the hard work that's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Rosansky. Um, I have participated in some of the Zoom uh, workshops and so on, and um, I'm looking forward to uh, doing it some more this month. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Olson? I'm not paying this time. Thank you. Trustee Keen Adams? Yes, I would like to welcome all the members of the board. I am looking forward to working together for what we love, which is the library. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to the yarn bomb program coming up soon where we get to make compounds with yarn and they will be decorating outside the library. If you want kids, they're downstairs. Okay, our next um, item, thank you, Trustee King Adams. Our next item on the agenda is the payment of bills. May I have a motion for the payment uh, of bills? Do we want to hear the treasurer's report? Oh, I'm so sorry. Go right ahead. I'm still giving the report for last month. Go right ahead. Thank you. This is a report for April, the ninth month of fiscal year. We are 73% of the way through the fiscal year. Revenues are at 90%. Expenditures are at 88%. Library materials, 84% of the, of the uh, are at 84%. Library operating expenditures are at 53%. General administration is at 72%. Employees for benefits is at 88. Workers in comp is at 61. Unemployment compensation is at 33%. Total expenditures are at 66% of the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Rosansky. Okay, our next order of business is the payment of bills. May I have a motion? to approve operating expenses of $243,938.60, payroll expenses of $274,801.12, special reserves expenses of $83,528.58 for a total monthly expense of $602,268.30. So motion. Second. Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions regarding the payment of bills? Yes. Um, I'm looking at this. Uh, f first of all, are these checks that have been actually sent out or they're pending our approval? They're pending your approval. The checks have been drafted and they're, um, these are, are invoices that we have received and uh, services that uh, have been rendered. I see. Um, the one I object to is the one from the uh, BBC services or BBC check for $32,000. Can you tell us the page, the page, please? I'd like to look at what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, it's on page, uh, page one. It's special reserves, page one. Oh, page one. So it may be at the back of the check register. It's about the 12 one down. It's, it's on page 15. Page 15. Right, Building envelope for 25. The reason I object to this check is this uh, whole bid process was just effective in, in design. Uh, they, I talked to a couple of contractors. They, they hung up the phone on them not giving them the information. The drawings I've seen are, are just the, the bevel insulation or paper insulation that they call for. It's not, it's, it's hard to see it on the, on the drawings they had. This is just a, a whole process that's, that's all messed up and it's their design, their drawings, and I don't think we should pay them any more than the deposit they got at this point. Uh, we, we need to investigate more exactly what was going on with this here because uh, it's it's not uh, the whole bid process, the design, the submission of the bids. The bids, I don't see any of the bids. The winning bid did not say on it uh, tapered or beveled insulation. It doesn't say it on the bid at all. So I don't know how anybody got got the, uh, accepted that. I think. 
why there's a differentiation there. We need to investigate this more and revisit this whole situation. So I, I don't I don't think they should be paid for the balance on us here. We, we should just hold on to it and see what's going on. Who's that's your opinion? I personally prefer this total, total lady. Excuse me, Councilor Vance. Okay, but speaking loudly until he's finished. Are you finished? Can I just speak now? Yes. Go ahead. Thank you. This is something we've been working on for over two years. Uh, this stuff, the bids that come in are usually always on the website. We are, by law, supposed to take the lowest bid that is offered to us. So, um, you know, They've already done work for us, and now you're saying we shouldn't pay for what they've done? I would like to know why, what, you know. I, I don't see the value of $50,000 in what they did. There's no way. It might be like 5000 or 10000 in drawings, that's it. And the rest of the process was all messed up. So Susan, is the money or gray? Right? Irregular. Know. I'm sorry, are we having a conversation with everyone here? With some? Well, when we open it up, you know, I'm, I'm it's not an open discussion. If I could call the trustees to speak, um, because we need to move this along. That's but, fine. Excuse me, Trustee yeah. Keenan, did you have a question? I did. Okay, go right ahead. My question is, what is the, and it's $33,000 at the end. I'm sorry, did you Yeah, it's $33,000. Is it for services already rendered or not yet rendered? It's for services that have uh, been rendered to date. Okay, so it's money that we actually do owe them for something that's already according, been Yeah, according to the contract. And if we didn't pay that bill, what would possibly happen? Uh, I don't know. Uh, they'd probably take some action uh, to collect. Okay, thank you. If I could interject, please. Um, I have a copy of page 10 from our attorneys uh, regarding um, the public contracting of bids. And it clearly states that um, an improper disclosure of bid information or um, irregularities is actually an illegal, it, it is illegal to engage in such bid activities. So I believe at the last board meeting in April, I brought up numerous irregularities in the bid documentation. I brought up the inconsist inconsistencies in the um, envelope consultant's response to numerous bidders, and then looking at the bids that were submitted, the discrepancies and the lack of information, but yet a decision to award the bid was made. So based on the fact that these are irregularities, and although this consultant may have produced some work, his bid process was flawed, and at this point, we're not even in a position to be confident that the results of the bid are accurate because of these inaccuracies. So I have to agree that this check should be removed from the check register, and that we need to do a thorough review of this process to determine if, in fact, the whole bid process was um, actually a legal process. And, and determine what the, all the irregularities were, not just the many that we uncovered. So I am concerned about this um, situation, and I would recommend that this particular check to BEC for $33,000 be pulled from the check register, and that we, um, we plan to do um, a, a thorough review of the process and determine where we stand. Could you give us the transaction number? Page 10 of the, um, oh, I'm sorry. Are you looking for the check or the attorney's The check number the check was check seven nine. Nine. Special Reserves, page 25. 1525. Well, you know, the check register with all the lines is page 15. Special Reserves were being withdrawn. And any information that you've gotten from the lawyer no, should it's, be shared with us. Well, it, it's not for me. It's Susan Lucky gave all of us these binders, and it's in there. Please read that part again that you put here at all It is illegal to engage in bid rigging, bid rotating, improper disclosure of bid information, improper specifications of a particular con subcontractor. And then it goes on, opening a sealed bid at any time. So there's numerous reasons why a bid is considered illegal. And we sort of have a couple of those going on with this process. As soon as contractors 
have a discrepancy in the information they receive, that's a red flag. And when the information is not presented in a bid, that's another red flag. So these are all reasons why there were bids that could not be completed, and even in inquiring for the information, they weren't able to get the information. It just seemed to, it just seems to mushroom into more and more complications. So I, I, I was unsatisfied with it last month, and I, I feel the same way this month. I'm sorry, Ms. Uh, Gilson. Are we talking about, we're supposed to be talking about this particular check? That's what she's talking about, about so no. not all this other information. No, I'm sorry. Us. The check for $33,000 is based on the information I'm giving you. That's why I'm requesting you pull well, the check. If you, want, if you want to revisit all of this, then I think that's got to be done at another time. Okay, well then my request well, is Susan, please pull it? this check. Can I and we'll move on. Can I just, I'm just belaboring this point. Can she, please, let me ask my question. I'm not trying to question, you know. Go right ahead. My question is, since we are in the discussion of payment of bills, if it is brought up that they do not want to pay a particular bill, is this not the time to vote there? One way or I another. Know, um, this has never come up before, so frankly, I don't, don't remember. Know, but I think the either. thing that makes sense to me is that you have a motion on the table, so I think you would have to vote that motion down and do a new motion with uh, that. Pertaining to this check. Yeah, well, that would be the, with that amount of that check removed and not approve the payment of that particular bill. So I, does that make sense? Or can I amend the motion? Yeah, yeah you, would, you would present an amended motion right now. Okay. But the person that, um, that accepted the motion, that uh, that made the motion, would have to accept that change, which I find no, they, no, no. Anyone can make an amended motion and override the original motion. But the, it has to be accepted by the. And then it's seconded, seconded by anyone. Robert's rules. Robert's rules. We've always been going according right. to the way so, that the person who made and seconded have to say, "Okay, we'll drop it," and then go to no, the next. Well, well, that's the way we've always done it. I know the phrase we've always done it. It's a good problem. Let's make an amended motion. Well, whatever. Uh, if if we need to do that, I will do that so that they can motion that. I whatever. Just okay, so that we can make the motion to amend the article that we pay the bills in, in full except for this check. I second. What happened to the other amendment? I said, I said I was okay with it. You were the second. Were you okay with letting it go? So they can change it? I can't do no. it. I believe that apparently, I mean, he's an attorney. I'm not an attorney, uh, but and we're not the best when it comes to Robert's rules, and I don't have a book on me. Yes, you vote now on the amended motion. If the amended motion fails, and you vote on the original motion. It's the, you have amended motion and second, it's on the floor. Okay. Um, so simple. Who takes the role? Is it? Um, You're doing for the, no, not picky. I just want to verify before we vote so everybody knows what we're voting for. That's okay. What I understand, what we're, we're taking a vote for. for the amended motion. Yes. So Cindy, would you please take the role? Fine. So the motion is to reduce the special reserve expense by the 33000 That's listed here. Is that? What? A payment of the bills excluding that particular check. Payment in full except for this one check. Okay. 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 And that motion is. Uh, okay. So that was. Okay. Carolyn, you seconded that. Yes. Okay. Trustee Makula? I vote for yes, but. Trustee Olson? No. Trustee Rosansky? I don't like the idea, I'm just stating my reasoning here. I don't like the idea of 
Excuse me, voting. Please, 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 please let me explain why. Please, it's time why to vote. It's not time for Excuse discussion, me. please. I understand your question. Please you vote. are so used to interrupting everything. Please Just vote. Just one thing. Mr. Rosansky, please vote so we may move on. Can you move to somebody else and I will vote when, when the vote, When the vote is motion's called, there's discussion stops. Thank you. Yes. So you're I'm you're asking if I can be called at the end. She's passed. Because passed. Because passed. If I can pass to, be, to vote at okay. the end, I have to think about this. Trustee Schoenfeld. Yes. Trustee Durbin. Yes. Trustee Hanusia. Yes. Trustee Keen Adams. No. Trustee Rosanson. I'm not voting for it the way it is. So no. I'd like to move for a motion to refer the building bills uh, to a committee. Excuse me, the so can you read the, the four, four, please? That's four yeses and three no's. Is that what you wanted? Motion carries, thank you. Trustee um, Keenan, do you have a question? No, I would like to move uh, for a motion to refer this to a committee. That all uh, the building, that the growth committee, there should be a growth committee. We don't have one right now. I move that we make one. Is there a second? I'll second it. We'll take a vote. Cindy, please take the roll. Uh, a building committee, a roofing committee. What's right. the motion? The building committee technically to Please, evaluate. Can we limit our conversation right? so we can move this along? You're saying? I need to know the motion. I have what is Please repeat the motion. I um, move that we commit, refer this to a committee for the book. Okay. <laughs> together and um, I can bring to you the information I received and we could uh, determine what we need to do since there seems to be so many irregularities in that bid process. Who's the we? I will meet with Susan Lemke because I've spoken with the contractors and I received a lot of information. I shared most of that with you last month. But we go from, from that point on. We, we do need, we have a couple, I think we have another item on this agenda that is also reflecting the same situation. So we can certainly um, move in that direction, but as of now, this check is, is not going to be paid because of the problems with the bid. I, I think everybody needs to see copies of the drawings and specifications, and, and then we can hash this whole thing out and see exactly what what the problems are. And, and a, a history of exactly what what went on and maybe some of uh, some uh, interrogation of some of the contractors that uh, participated in this thing again who's we as a the board, board. Okay. As, as a board, board we can board. do this yeah. okay so it's a separate a copy of this stuff. no this is my this is my motion and she's asking for clarity so we're holding a check and now we need to do something about it we will have a review process but we can certainly discuss those details after this board meeting so we can move on because, like I said, there are other items on this agenda that may be affected by this vote. But then we'll all be included in that board, correct? Oh, it doesn't matter to me. You can be there if you're interested in it. Absolutely. We'll, we can discuss that later. I'm not excluding anyone. I'm just trying to move on with this agenda. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the director's report. Um, I just would like to, uh, last month I told you that I was trying to hire my administrative uh, assistant position, which has been open since 
mid January, and I'm very happy to introduce you to my new administrative assistant, Margaret. Margaret, can you pronounce your last name? Margaret Harrison. Harrison. Yeah. <laughs> Margaret helped uh, already with this just the start of this week and has helped with uh, put together your budget binders, which don't leave without those today. Oh. So I'm very grateful to have Margaret's assistance now. Uh, Margaret was promoted from within. She was uh, working in payment service before. Welcome. And the only other thing I wanted to mention is that we have heard from uh, that was it, that treasurer that we uh, have tax rate litigation uh, for the years 2011, 2012, 2013, and 2014. Uh, they have moved on from the 2009-2010 all the way up to 2011. So that is working its way through the process, and we have passed that to our lawyers to take a look at. Okay. That is all I have for you. If you have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. Are there any questions? I had some comments. Sure. Um, I just wanted to, and I know that we're, it's 8.30 already, but the last meeting we had wasn't until after 10 o'clock, so I'm not really too concerned about taking that to congratulate the staff on things that they've done. Um, I wanted to comment on the um, Carl Hyacin joining the book talk last month. I'm not sure how many people are familiar with him, but he is a wonderful author who is concerned with uh, nature and saving nature, and he has uh, inspired a movie called Poop, which is one of my son's favorites about saving health, so I was very happy to see that he joined, surprisingly. Uh, another comment um, that was in the director's report, it's on page 32, if anyone cares to look, is from someone who asks, for yoga um, and was very happy that we have it and would like to have more of it. Uh, congratulations to Cecilia for winning, I think it was a grant, uh, and April Lee's book that I thought was fabulous. She had pictures of the staff with and without masks because the kids were afraid when they came in and saw the people with masks and didn't know who they were and I can understand how she feels because it's happening to me at work. It's kind of funny when the kids come in and I like to work. Um, and I wanted to congratulate Sasha again. The article that was written about you was fabulous. And I'm very proud to have it on the staff here. Um, and I did want to ask, and it was mentioned earlier, um, and I guess this is actually a question, yes. So the FOIA requests that are done by any board member, I understood those things, and I have seen some of those things. So are, are the things that are being requested information that is already provided to us? Because it's I'm, I'm confused. No, my my FOIA requests are because I need the information, and that's the only way I can get them. I would have to disagree. So I certainly can't can just agree with you. Also, oh, every time I've made a request for information, the board took a vote and said I didn't need it. So I no, because when you requested a packet, this you know I don't want to argue this, but you know we're moving on. It's a new era. Of well, let's put that because I don't know. Okay, well that's what I've been going through for six years, but I believe that's behind us, and I would love to move on with this agenda. So thank you. If that, are those things your questions complete? Yes. Thank you so much. Okay, we hope not to see your So our next um, item is communications. Is there anything special there? Okay, so we're moving on to 13 new business. May I have a motion to move to approve ordinance 2101 board meeting schedule? I move this motion. I second. Thank you. Are there any comments? I would like to make a comment. I would like to change the meetings that will be held in the Commons meeting room of the library building at 6920 Oakton Street, Niles, Illinois. I would like them to begin at 6.30 p.m. rather than 7. Okay. So the only change is from and in the Commons meeting room. It's no, they can't be in the Commons reading meeting room because it's very often used for programs. Um, yeah. So it we can move back to the boardroom. Unfortunately, due to COVID, I don't see us going back upstairs with, with having residents sitting right behind us in that close proximity. I, I motion that it is in this room and that we make accommodations um, to accommodate the meeting once a month. I think we can handle that. Well, Battle of the Books has been on Wednesday nights for 
25. Oh, I don't, I don't want you to change the date, but maybe we can figure out they can have the entire second floor, but we need a meeting room where we can have this space that we need. And I realize this was really complicated for your staff to create, and, and the stage was an issue, but apparently we're able to fit many people on the stage um, as we see the chairs there. But Susan, once a month, we, we cannot meet upstairs especially with people don't have to wear masks, they do have to wear masks. And during the pandemic, I just don't think it's the best move for us. And this, and if we're gonna have the number of um, residents participating, we do need the space. And that would be a temporary thing until COVID is over. Well, until I mean, people feel safe about it with you. No, it's not an excuse. This, this room is larger and we're in the middle of a pandemic and we're still wearing masks, we're not wearing, wearing masks. So yeah, this room I think is spaced out better. So when we feel more comfortable, we feel more comfortable. I don't know, for this year I think this location would do. You, you know, the park district meets in a room this size. The village, we've been there I'm sure, meets in a room about this size. There's no reason that we shouldn't be meeting in a room this size. That room is much too small. It's only one third of this size. Well, the ceilings are shorter. There's less volume of air. I, I think this is a safer location for present. I just want to point out that we are supposed to be moving into phase five, and the state's guidelines for phase five is that life goes back to normal. So, yes, but, but still, that's next month, isn't that it? That is next month. That is June. So by the next meeting, we will be in phase five. Well, can we take a vote on this? Yeah. Um, I I are there any other changes well. to this schedule? I would like to comment. Since oh, please do. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I think there is a reason to be in the board of several. One, it is the board. Uh, second, I would really hate to displace any program that we take place in here. Um, and I think that the, um, because we are zooming the pro or streaming the program, the public is still able to attend. It's not like they can't see this. Well, I also don't think we need to Zoom any longer. If we're going to have in-person meetings, uh, I would recommend you no longer Zoom because that's so many problems in itself. But I, I'm, I'm all for in-person meetings, but I think at this point we need a larger meeting room, which would be this room. And Susan, our library is huge. I'm sure we could come up with some ways to accommodate our Battle of the Books. Well, the thing with Battle of the Books is that it's done, and uh, Olivia knows this because she did battle. It's, it's just the two teams in the room at a time. Nobody else can be around because then they hear the questions. How large are the teams? Um, it depends. As a job for office, sometimes as many as 40. Culver is often very large, and they can be, and particularly when their parents are there in the room, they, they do fill up this room. Not all the teams do. Some of the smaller schools don't. Uh, I, would, I would like to suggest, I have actually put this on the schedule because I thought this would be easy. I wanted you guys, you new trustees, to have the opportunity to just have a real quick and easy motion to just pass and get that under your belt. I'm going to suggest that somebody make a motion to table this to next month. It needs to be decided next month. But this is not, uh, we need to think this through a little bit more. So yeah. you don't have to, but that's my suggestion. I'm willing to motion to table it. I think if people have concerns about it, we, we, this is something like you were mentioned, it might need some discussion. Plus next month, since it will be our second month, we will see the size of our audience. Because normally, and I don't want to say, normally we don't have that many people show up to a board meeting. Yeah. Well, that was before, and again, well, this is a board meeting, and what I'm would, trying, or if you want to finish, I'll talk. No, well, actually, I'm not interested in this, if, discussing it any further. What I'm trying to say is a board meeting should take place in a room that is set up for a board meeting, and there should be enough space between the board and the residents sitting in a room where I'm a board member and I have residents sitting behind me, it's just not the way board meetings should be set up. The library has done that, yes, but if you attend any board meetings, your trustees should be facing your residents. We're supposed to be interacting with them. It's not a, it's not a meeting in a school classroom. It's not a meeting for staff, Susan. 
it's a board meeting. So I, I, I still, I'm still accepting the motion that it, or the change to the motion that Susan Schoenfeld suggested that we start at 6.30 and that the meetings be conducted in the comments. So you have and a motion on the ta to table, you actually have to take I a second a motion to table. There's a motion and a second. Yeah. So you have to actually take that. We really shouldn't have had any conversation. So you actually just have to do the roll okay, call. Okay, we'll vote on her motion. Okay, so this is the motion to table. Trustee Rosansky? I vote yes to table. Trustee Derbliss? No. Trustee Henrizziak? No. Trustee Pinato? Yes. to the Commons meeting room. Are there any other changes or requests regarding this? Uh, oh, I wish to change the date of the August meeting till the 25th next week because at, at that point uh, people would have more time off for vacations and things like that and the kids will be back in school at that point. Well, I say table it again because I've uh, already put these down and these are okay for my calendar. And I and are you planning on being out of town yourself or are you just saying people in general? I'd like to change it to the 25th. I think it's the third Wednesday of every month, isn't it? It's always been the third Wednesday. Wednesday. I know we're not supposed to go according to it's always been, except usually during the holidays. We will sometimes change it because, you know, of it being here the holidays. So I have a motion on the table for the location to be in the Commons and for the time changing to 6.30. And now we have a request to change one of the meetings from August 18th to what was it? You okay, shouldn't there so. be two separate motions because one would probably pass with no problem and the other one there might be a couple of questions. Okay, we have two motions then. May I have a motion to move the board meeting schedule to 6.30 p.m. and the location in the Commons meeting room? Do I have a, a motion for that? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Move already motioned that. And Susan second. Oh good, so now we can vote on this motion. Yes. Okay, please take the roll. Um, Trustee McCula, you made the motion. So this is to go to 630. Yes. And in, in the, the comments. comments. Yes. Okay. Trustee Olson. No. Trustee Rosansky. I'll say yes just so we can get things going. Trustee Schoenfeld. Yes. Trustee Durbin. Yes. Trustee Nuzia. Yes. Trustee Keen Adams. No. Five yeses and two no. Thank you. All right, so now may I have a motion to change the August 18th board meeting to August 25th? I make that motion. And I have a second. Thank you. I would like to table that the rest of my calendar. I don't understand what's the reason to move it. Except what you just said, that people don't be. 
So and now we're here. here. It's going to be here. Then. So now we'll take a roll. So now we have to have a. Do we take a? Do we take a roll now on the first motion, or do we have to take a roll on the table? Table. Okay. So may well, we have a motion? I didn't hear a second. Oh, that's right. You're right. I second for which for her tabling it. I am fine with that because I like to check my phone okay. here too. Because I didn't realize anybody wanted to change. It. Are voting on the table okay. to change the date of the August meeting. Everybody going to table? Are you voting yeah. on the motion to table? On the motion to table it, yes. Until next month, so we can check our calendars. Trustee Olson. Um, yes, I'm Trustee Rosanson. Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld. No. Trustee Durbin? No. Trustee Anusia? Yes. Trustee King Adams? Yes. Trustee Mukula? No. Five yeses. Library Board of Trustees approve the recommended negotiated renewal of the health care insurance plan with Blue, Blue Cross and Blue Shield beginning July 1st, 2021 and ending on June 30th, 2022. I move. Yes, sir. So, um, I have invited our uh, Broker Catherine Loney from uh, GCG, who actually uh, helped to uh, bring our census to market and uh, uh, fit the pricing that you see before you. Um, I'd like to invite her to speak if that's all right. Thank you. Oh, so we're having a presentation. Okay, I was in order that. I'll be sure. That's fine. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I just didn't know. Thank you. I'm Catherine Bloney from GCG Financial. Thank you. I've had the pleasure to be able to work with the staff over a number of years, making sure that we're educating them for their benefits, what is available, talking about networks, talking about how to best utilize their health plan. And so we've established a very good relationship, so I thank you for the opportunity to get to know your staff. And as we did the evaluation this year, we received the renewal, and there was an increase. We did take it out to market to bid. We did get declines that were not competitive. And then we got one from Humana that was a similar plan, but it was not competitive. It was completely higher than what your renewal was. But we did have one from United Healthcare. So we asked the employees to look at the networks to make sure, because if someone was going to be out of network, it would mean more money out of pocket on their behalf, so it was not comparing apples to apples. I did go back to Blue Cross, negotiated with Blue Cross, and that's where we came up with a reduction over our current premium. So I think the report that was in, in the packet that you yes. all had the opportunity to read clearly lays out yes. Yes. the process that is done, but I did want to entertain any questions that you might have. Thank you. Are there any questions? from any of the trustees? No, I think we're good. Thanks. Whatever you're looking for. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have a motion. I have a second. 
Cindy, could you please call the roll? And this is for the Blue Cross Blue Shield, correct? Yes. I just want to make sure. Okay. Blue Cross Blue Shield. All right, got it. All right. Trustee McCulla. Yes. Trustee Olson. Yes. Trustee Rosansky. Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld. Yes. Trustee Durbin. Yes. Trustee Musiak. Yes. Trustee King Adams. Yes. Motion carries. Yeah, Item is 13C. May I have a motion to move the Library Board of Trustees to approve the recommended price tag to be charged for health insurance beginning on July 1, 2021 and ending on June 30th, 2022. So Okay, are there any questions? Yes, uh, I think we need to um, uh, table this until we do our, our budget uh, review process and, and uh, bring this up at that point, uh, which is going to be, we should have been doing it at this point already, I think, but... Uh, okay. Uh, do I have a second? Table this until the next... My second. Okay, so we have a table, a second, and now we're ready for a vote. I think I'm getting good at this. Can, I, motion, sir, can I ask you to please restate what the, yes. the motion was? I want to make sure I understand completely. The motion is to table the discussion. But I thought I was seconding with the motion to pass it, to approve it. You're, you were seconding the motion to discuss it. Okay, so. And like everything else, okay. we, he threw okay. in a table now. Okay. So okay. we're at the table stage. Okay. And what we're voting on tabling this until next month. So we're voting to table. We just voted for Blue Cross Blue Shield. So right. What exactly are we voting? For we're table? voting to table this agenda item, which is the price tag to be charged for health insurance. This is the this is the um, portion where this is where a portion of it is paid by the employees and a portion of it is paid by um, the by the library. Library. Sometimes it's referred to as contribution level. Yeah. Yes. So the referral, so the approval of the motion is to review the contract with Blue Cross Blue Shield to Just evaluate the contribution, the employee contribution, okay. is thank what you. he's asking to table. That's what, I'm like, we just voted for Blue Cross Blue Shield. Okay, thank you. And my only concern, if I can voice a concern, is the fact that we do go into open enrollment to proceed to let employees know what their contribution will be. So at that point in time, we would have to let them know that the board has decided to defer this conversation until another meeting. So I would appreciate knowing when that's going to be. So when we're doing the open enrollment meetings, because they can say their current quick, contribution right? is going to remain the same, and there may be a change. It's a little over a month away, isn't it? It is, but we have to give them the information I understand. 30 when? days prior. And so in okay. that sense, we start doing open enrollment meetings. Yeah. When do you start doing open enrollment, I'm sorry? We do not have them on the calendar yet, but typically we try to do them the middle of May. Okay. So that individuals have that opportunity to review. Middle of May? For a July 1st effective date. Okay, it's May 19th. Well, we start now. Last year, I think we did the last week. We did Zoom meetings the last week of May. So you'll be starting when this year? I have not put it on the calendar. We were waiting to make sure it was approved and whether we had to go through the process. So process. would you say we have a week? We to probably put everything, pull everything together so that we have Zoom meetings for the employees, I'll say by the end of May. Okay, thank you for that. Okay. Okay, so um, we have a motion to table and we're going to take, are, are there any more questions? Yes, I have a question. I'm if sorry. we do table that motion, then it would be put on the agenda for next month? Well, no, we have to fit it within the timeline of open enrollment. So we would have to have another meeting between yes. now and then? absolutely. For the purpose of finding out if we can lower it, or what is the purpose for tabling? We're going to discuss it as part of our, our budget uh, budgeting process. But the budget's not till next agenda. 
our next monthly meeting, correct? Right? So if we have another meeting in between yeah. the two, it would only be on this one item. It as may far be, as I'm concerned, it, I think we're waiting be. items budget because it starts on July 1st, and here we are like five weeks ahead of time. I mean, we need to have a special meeting, I believe. So with and the special meeting... We should meeting, discuss this as part of that. So you're proposing a special meeting for the budget, not just for this item? But this is included. But, but we At this point, answer. we're tabling... Um, we're tabling to, it right so now. Yes, can we, and we will make sure the meeting is scheduled well enough in advance because our staff needs to be available for open enrollment. Right, so that would only be next week. We would so right now, we're week. tabling. We have until the end of the month, so we need but to. But that's next week. I mean, so, and I am out of town next week. So okay. It's, but that's all right. And you don't have time to have a budget meeting next week. We, we are not. You, you have a binder that big right. for the yeah, for the budget. So you will need a lot of time to review it. Okay, but we would like to table this. So we have motion begins, on the table. I believe the from what I've read in the documents, I, I believe. Um, these new rates start July 1st. So Correct. We have 30. But that the staff needs time to decide what they're going to do and they'll need to know how much it's going to cost them. And even if we do meet next week, it only gives please. them one week to make that decision. That's not good. What's the deadline, Catherine? Is it, does it have to be next week or could they have the meeting in June, June, like the first week of June? I think the difficulty that I see is that is that people need to make a decision on whether they're making an election of coverage, whether it's for their employees, spouse, children, or family. That's the challenge. We do need to get make sure by the 15th of June that we have their elections in so that yes, we make sure they have coverage oh, wait, for July 1st. We don't plan on waiting that long. So if we're able to, or I go back to, or we part in part of this, that due to the I can go to Blue Cross and I can say there is going to be an additional board discussion. Can I have an extended open if we or have, uh, our limited open enrollment? Okay, Should great. it be a gross change in sure. what the contributions are? Okay. I can ask for that. I can request it. They don't always give it to me for sizes of your group, but I can request it. Well, I believe if we if we could get through our agenda, we may have some of these questions answered before you even leave tonight and see what what will work best for for you and our staff because we're, we're not trying to ignore the urgency of this right right so if we could just vote to i think our, the motion on, on the table the motion to table is up correct mm -hmm. yes trustee olson no Trustee Rosansky. No. Trustee Chung. Yeah. Trustee Garblet. Yes. Trustee Nees Hanusia. Yes. Trustee Keen Adams. No. Four yeses and three no's. Okay, the next item on the agenda is we are at 13D. May I have a motion regarding the tentative pending receipt of a final agreement? Move to instruct the executive director to sign the agreement on behalf of the Niles Main District Library with complete roofing for the roofing project approved on Wednesday, April 21st. 2021. Moved. Second. Moved. Wasn't there a change? There was a change, yeah. The, the wording pending attorney review was added to that motion. Okay, so pending attorney review. And the attorney review. And you have received it yet? No. Because I know when I talked to you earlier in the week, you were still waiting. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there any um, comments regarding this? The comments are we don't have the contract yet. Uh, this, I, I think this whole uh, roof project needs to be uh, revisited totally. So uh, we don't have a contract. We're not signing the contract. As far as I'm concerned, it's 
the whole situation is void. I'm not going to approve a contract. I think instead of like, but he's finished. I think we has been has been stated before. We've been through this. We've been working at it for two years. We've looked at all the paperwork. We've all approved it, and it wasn't just off the tip of our tongue. It's a thing that we chose or decided upon. I mean, it's been well thought out by the board. Look at the paperwork. You can see the information that you need. It doesn't seem like it was well thought out by the board. Um, if they, this well, President McCool, they just let her finish. Yeah, I thought she was done. There were there was a lot more information than um, was there was a lot more information that we learned during the board meeting. Which is what? Well, whatever you're 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 uh, doubting or contesting. Okay. If I could just interject because we really should be having conversations with each other. This item 13D is the um, the board the other motion that is identical to I believe it was 13 um, let's see there were two issues with, oh the check the check that we have pulled from the check register which is being held is being held because of the inconsistencies in the bid process so the questions about the bid process and the irregularities and the issues that existed amongst the contractors are why we pulled the check so there's issues with the person who was awarded the bid because the bids that we received weren't complete and, and it goes on and on so we're saying because the bid process and irregularities we're holding back the check and to proceed to sign a contract for the same roofing project is being questioned for the same reasons. The bid process was found to be irregular in the way it was written, there were inconsistencies in the information, and there was difficulty on the part of many of the bidders. So that's why um, we are looking at this item, 13B, as we did the check in the check register. So there's a motion to approve this, um, there's, there's a motion on the table, and the motion is tentative pending, I think she called it attorney pending. Yeah, the, the, the first attorney. part of that guy struck, actually, and the, the revised motion would be, so striking out the tentative pending receipt of final agreement. It was moved to instruct the executive director to sign the agreement on behalf of the Niles Main District Library with complete roofing for the roofing project approved on Wednesday, April 21st, 2021 pending attorney review. Okay, so the contract is still pending. We right. do not have a contract. We do not have a contract. Okay, so it's a pending contract at the end of the sentence then. Okay. One I of understand. the things I see here, our district put a roof on um, Iceland Park. They paid $16 a square foot, a comparable roof. Your bid is over $40 a square foot. I, I can't comprehend how you can have such a increase. Well, you can share for all the meetings. Excuse uh, me, Trustee yeah. McCoola, the, the motion on the table is based on a on a contract that's pending. Okay. And um, the director's requesting that we move to instruct the, the executive director to sign the agreement on behalf of the Niles District Library with complete roofing for roofing project approved on West Wednesday, April 21st, 2021 pending the contract from the attorney. So we have a motion, we have a second. Can we take a vote on this now? Yes. What are you supposed to be able to discuss it? Oh, do you have more discussion? I'm sorry, are there more comments? No. Can I just Okay. If Cindy I just, is, yeah, I think that it's time to stop being negative about everything that we've done in the past. All of this was done um, after we studied for a very long time, and it wasn't just a rash decision. 
I think that we should be able to, pending attorney review, continue with this signature. Can we ask Greg to tell us how we can? Sure. Uh, I just want to mention, uh, Joe, you said it was over $40 and so on. The bid is for seven hundred and sixteen thousand four hundred dollars for forty thousand square feet of roofing, and the math works out to seventeen dollars and ninety-one cents per square foot. So far, less than forty, but I admit that it's uh, that it's more than sixteen. Although I don't know how big the parking project was. Or if it had the same uh, yeah, requirements know. that yeah, we have by you. government. Okay. Are. Excuse oh. me. Thank you for your input. But Thank the motion you. on the table. Yes. Is, I understand the motion. Okay, can we please, I mean, but all the side conversation doesn't get us to the, the important items on the agenda. So can we, um, Cindy, are, are we ready to take a roll now? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry. Justin <laughs> Makula? No. Justin Olson? Yes. Justin Rosansky? Yes. Schoenfeld? No. Trustee Derblick? No. Trustee Hanusiak? No. Trustee King Adams? Yes. Recasts or no. Okay, the next item on our agenda, 13 E. Yes, 13E. May I have a motion for discussion and setting of dates for the 2021-2022 budget special meeting? I don't think you actually need a motion on that since it's a, it's a discussion. Well, maybe do for the setting of the dates, I apologize. Okay. May I have a motion? No motion. In a second. Sue seconded. I second. Oh, Joe seconded. Okay, if I could just start out, were we all supposed to receive a budget binder? There were oh, we take them off of a card. I didn't know that. Okay. All right. Well, no, I just I can get them. Oh, right. Don't worry about it. I just noticed they had it, and I didn't know. Those were the trustee binders that you all received at the orientations. Oh, that was the binder where page. That's where page ten is. It's in there. Okay. All right. So. Um, well, it's open for discussion. Do we have any discussion? What, 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 what are the dates? We are, um, okay, it's discussion for setting dates. Okay, so, well, I would like to amend the motion. And um, um, I, I'd like to amend the motion to table it. And the reason is because we are receiving our binders today and it would provide additional time for trustees to thoroughly review the budget binder that we're receiving this evening and their calendars to schedule the 2021-22 budget process. So, can I have a second? I was going to ask a question before we do that. Um, does this, this when I table, I get a second, and then we question okay. later. Okay, but can I just clarify, if you table this, you are tabling it to the June meeting and you will not have a chance to revisit it. If I could just, if I could just get time. through this, this, this board agenda, I think I can answer your questions. Believe it or not, I really thought a lot of this out, and I have some suggestions. I'm not trying to question you. It's just yes. that okay. you, you need to set this date of the next meeting before we leave tonight. OK, sounds like a plan. Do we want, can we but table? This for. Can we table? Um, we need to table this motion so that we can move forward, and that's what I'm trying to do. Is that possible? Because we're not ready to set dates right now. Well, will this will this negatively affect our insurance thing that we're talking? That you promised her we'd get it done. Yes, we can get through this meeting without all the side comments. We, I really do have a plan here. <laughs> Well, you need to leave room for discussion. Where was okay, all right. If we want to discuss it, it's fine. But keep questioning me about something. You need a second on your motion. Carolyn, you need a second on your motion. Yes. We do have a second. I agree. Now your discussion. 
but it was a motion to table, so there's no discussion, yeah. right? Yeah, once you table, there's no discussion, because it's tabled. It's ruled about, yeah. yeah. So we didn't have a chance. Okay, let, let's put it this way. All right, I withdraw my motion to table, because everyone's just jumping in anyway. So let me go to this point. Um, I do not want to schedule budget meeting dates tonight. I think we need to pick a date to do that after we've had time to go through that budget binder because the trustees, I feel, and myself personally, need to be informed and then we move forward. So, yes? I suggest we have a meeting next week to kind of review some of this material we'll get here and then set dates for a budget. Well, actually, what I was hoping to do was to not set the schedule for the meetings tonight but my plan was to schedule a special board meeting on Monday, May 24th at 6.30 in this room to plan for the 21-22 budget process, which is more than one day, by the way, and to review and revise our methods and procedures. And this would be an in-person meeting, no Google, Zoom at that time, and I think we can get a lot done. And I can present the uh, agenda to you in the morning, Susan, for um, posting. Okay. So now that's my motion, or is that my recommendation? Do I make a motion, and then in order to talk, do I need to get a second? Can you make a motion that for a budget workshop setting, can you get a second on your motion? Okay. I should. So. Yes. So we have the motion. Uh, yes, we do. I agree. We had that motion, and then there was a mo then there was an amendment to table. Then you withdrew the amendment. Table. So we need to vote on that one, and then go on to my one. Or, or can we? I just yeah, amended it. Yeah, you withdrew that, so that's fine. And that other motion wasn't really a motion because it, it, all it was is discussion and setting of dates. But you didn't actually set a date yet. There's nothing. There's been nothing to vote on yet. So now, now you're making a motion that is something to vote on. Okay, yeah, which is she's she's the meeting meeting on May 24th. So are we good? Which is fine. So we yeah. can now, now we can, and did I get a second? I should. Okay, okay, so now you want to. Discuss. Yeah, my question is, since we are on a time crunch with the insurance, right. is that the date we are going to definitely make our decision so that they can go ahead? Yes. Okay. Because I think that's a high priority. No, and I and like I told you, I've already worked this all out. I've been through the agenda and it's on my list. Okay, fine. I just appreciate you clarifying it. Any other comments, questions? We I about? just think it's oh, strange that we have to have a meeting to set meetings. Um, and also, Susan won't be here next week. I, I, I will be here Monday. That's fine. And Thank you. Um, I think it's really interesting that you have everything scheduled out already when you didn't know you were going to be president. I knew what I wanted for the budget meeting. I would have been discussing it with all of you anyway. You don't have to be president to make a, a recommendation for a date. You just need to have people interested in working with you. And one day maybe you'll be interested in working with me and we want to have these nasty kind of comments. But may, we please, may we please have a vote? Trustee Gerblick? Yes. Trustee Gerblick? Yes. Trustee Gerblick? Yes. Trustee Keen Adams? No. Trustee Yes. Trustee Olson? No. This is next Monday, correct? This Monday. Yeah. Uh, Annie, you're talking 6.30 again? Or yes. 7? Yes, 6.30. trying to think, because I think I hear it's on schedule for Monday. Give me a second. Okay. Uh, yes. Justice Schoenfeld? Yes. Five yeses, two noes. Okay, the next item on the agenda is 14 others. 
we have any trustee comments for others? I would like to, uh, can I send up my own email address with the library? You, you, you have the instructions for setting up your library email? Yeah. Yeah, so you need to log into your library email. Well, uh, but you want your personal one, that actually you cannot do. The, the, our attorney uh, strongly advises all trustees to use the library's email for the purpose of transparency and being able to respond to FOIA requests. So, uh, and unfortunately, our security settings do not allow emails to be forwarded. And that was a that was a Microsoft security setting, not our own. So, yeah, unfortunately, I know it will be a nuisance to check a second email account, but we will have to we will have to stop using your Yahoo account and start using just the library account because you have to have access to them to all of the messages that come to library trustees. So I think his question is to create his own trustee email. Account. He has that. Yeah, that was part of his. No, not, not the outlook. I think he's saying to create his own trustee no, it email has to, account. It has to be through the NodsLibrary.org. Uh, but, so. in, but in order for him to get, if he created his own trustee email account, that wasn't an outlook, I guess, not through the library, he would still get all his emails because wouldn't his email address Right. But, but our IT site. department would have no access to that email account. And our, as I said, our lawyer strongly recommends that all trustees do all of their library official communicating through your library account. So, 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 the, so basically it's not a secure email. Your, your email would not be a secure email. The library's email is extremely secure, and that is part of the reason why it should be going through the library's security settings. So what I'm saying is my, my email address at the library is not a secure uh, email because anybody at the library can get it. Oh, heavens no. But your personal No, no, no. It is not, it's, it's only for you. You will be the only one who knows the password. Um, yeah, IT would, I think, even not even see the password. They would have to go in and reset it to be able to gather your emails if we had a FOIA request. So no, it's very, very secure. Okay. And nobody here would ever dream of going in and looking right. at it. The second, uh, second thing is you mentioned the Sunshine uh, Law uh, uh, publication. Would, would you be able to get that for us? The Open Meetings Act training? No, yeah. there was a... Uh, that, uh, the Gillick Sunshine Law book. Say it again. The um, Gillick, G-L-I-B-Gillick. I'm not familiar with what you're... The Sunshine Law book? You mentioned that in the, in the tour. No, Sunshine no. not familiar to me. But if you sent me the name of what you're interested in getting, I'm going to ensure. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Um, regarding our attorneys, um, I, I, I've learned through this past year especially that there, there, there are a lot of requests that go through our, our attorneys. And um, I'm not sure what the Criteria, criteria is for us to require their expertise, but um, I, I'm concerned that the, their, the requests are very numerous, and I, I would like to ask that in the future, if, if you need to contact our attorneys for, um, I don't know if it's um, advice or, or information, do you think that could be brought to the board president's attention and then maybe the board could discuss if we need to use them for all these different reasons because I think I think for a lot of things our staff is pretty knowledgeable or experienced that for all these years and and I'm thinking maybe everything isn't as necessary as it's becoming just maybe a habit. So oh, it's not a habit. I, I only consult the attorneys when I have a legal question that I need advice on. But um, and you know when it's not a um, something that requires a quick response, I certainly could do that. Uh, if it's something where I need, like, let's say it's a FOIA request that is complicated for some reason, um, I would need to consult them more quickly than that because I have five business days to respond. Okay, so, well, do you think you could even just give me a quick text or a quick phone call? I certainly could. So I we could have some dialogue. Yeah, that, that's up to you. If that's what the board wants, I certainly could do that. Oh, I would, I'd appreciate being part of this because I'm trying to understand the gravity of everything they do for us. Sure. If, if that's acceptable with you, I, I would really appreciate it. 
Is okay. it something that we need to make as an agenda item for the next meeting then? No, it's a request for me as the president. I'm requesting it, and of course, if there needs to be approval, I, I, I don't really give approval as a single person. The board gives approval as a group. Right. I, don't, I don't feel like Susan needs to tell us every time she consults the lawyer. Well, I feel differently. I would like to work with her on that. I thought that we were supposed to work as a board have an individual request is not allowed. Well, the president has a little more leaway on the operations of the law. You are also a position. member of the board. Absolutely. An individual request. Of course they can. No, I don't think so. Here, I don't think so. It's not part of Robert's rule. Okay. Robert's rules, not Robert's rules. And I have a question again, right at this moment. My question to you is, as president, is your goal to micromanage everything? Because if that's the case, I do have a problem with some of your requests. This one, at this point, I don't have a problem as long as it doesn't get into your micromanaging. Well, Trustee Rosansky, once again, I do not want to engage in conversations that take us down this uh, negative road. Which um, is normally what your job is. Are there any more questions under other? Yes. Yes. Before Trustee all of the new trustees come and sign this oath of office for the state of Illinois. Can I get my word? Yep. Would you like to pass them out? Yeah, you could um, maybe um, give me a few for this you way. Just pass, just pass, just pass them down. Pass the name is right here. All right. Thank you so much. Here we go. All right, so there aren't, there aren't any further questions. May I have a moment? Well, is that there aren't any more questions, correct? May I have a motion to adjourn? Yes. Thank you. Diana, are these for everyone? No, no, it's for the people who did the oath. That's for the okay. Yeah. But they are by name, so make sure you get the right one. Well, I'm assuming that your name is on the left. Yes. And my address and my phone number, yeah. And I'm handing it back to you. Yes, I'm looking for a second. I'll hold. Oh, you're right. You're right. I mean, I question a Do I want to Okay. And then, okay, thank you. Olivia. Yes. So we have a motion and a second. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes. Right, 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 right. Yes. 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 Cindy, thank you for all of your work.